Hey there, Joel Lord here, and today I will talk to you about the OpenID Connect protocol. OpenID Connect is the third iteration of the OpenID protocol. It was launched in late 2014 in its current form and is supported by the OpenID Foundation. It is a free and open protocol that aims at fixing one big issue with the OWASP specification, which is authentication. The OpenID Connect protocol, also called OIDC, is now widely accepted as the solution for authenticating users on web services and is adopted by large companies including Google, Microsoft, and PayPal. The reason why OIDC is so easy to use is that it sits on top of an existing technology called OAuth 2.0. By leveraging the existing processes that are part of OAuth, it makes it very easy to integrate OIDC in your current application. This lets you keep your current OAuth process for what it was built to do. OAuth was built to take care of authorization to access resources. It is there to say if a user can access your application, a page, or any other specific resource in your application. As long as the user is authenticated, he is allowed to use the specified resource. OpenID Connect, on the other hand, is there to validate the identity of the user. It takes care of the authentication part. With OIDC, you know who is accessing what. You can also collect some information about your users, whether it's for marketing purposes or to provide some personalized content to your users. As long as they accept to share their personal information with you, you can actually use it. Now, in order to understand how OpenID Connect works, we need to cover some concepts first. So let's talk about the participants involved in the process. The end user is the person that wants to authenticate. In Auth2.0, he is referred as the resource owner and his own identity is a resource that he owns. Secondly, you have a relying party. The relying party, or RP, is the OAuth 2.0 client that connects to the identity provider to authenticate. This would be your application that wants to access the end user identity resource. And finally, the identity provider is the OAuth 2.0 authorization server, which offers the authentication as a service. It ensures that the end user is authenticated and provides information also called claims, to the relying party. So how does the information move from the identity provider to the relying party? This is where the identity token comes into play. The identity token contains various attributes of information about the end user and how he was authenticated. Amongst those claims, you would have the subject, which would typically be your username, the issuing authority, which is the address of the identity provider, the audience, which identifies the relying party authorized to use this information, and the issue date and expiration date, which are used to manage your session. The ID token is then encoded as a JSON web token, or JWT. A JWT contains three parts. It has a header that contains information about the type of JWT, as well as the algorithm that it uses. It is followed by a payload, which in this case is the claims of our ID token, so all the information. And finally, it has a JSON web signature to ensure integrity and non-repudiation. Those three are then combined into one single JWT that can be encrypted. It is usually sent in the format of a base64 encoded string so that it can easily be used as a query parameter by a browser. Now the OpenID Connect specification can send claims about the users which could be any of about 20 standard pieces of information, such as name, email, gender, birthday, and so on. All the information that is sent from the identity provider has to be consented by the end user. OIDC also includes scopes of information that could be requested. In order to request any OpenID information, you need to include an OpenID scope. It is mandatory to obtain any OIDC information. You also have access to the four standard sets of scope information that are predefined in the standard. Those are profile, email, address, and phone. Your scope information can be provided in the first request to your identity provider and will be sent back as part of the payload with your JWT token. You can also request information on subsequent REST calls by using the access token that was provided to you. With OpenID Connect, you can use different flows to authorize and authenticate your end users. There are three different flows that you can use. So during this quick introduction, we will focus on the authorization code flow, which is based on the OAuth flow of the same name. The first step is your user connecting to your application using a user agent, such as a web browser. The user wants to authenticate in this application, so he clicks on the login button. And then a get request 
to the authorization endpoint of the identity provider is sent by passing a response type set to code, which indicates the authorization code flow, the scope, which needs open ID, but could also include email, profile, address, and phone. And by specifying open ID as part of our scope, we are indicating the ID provider that this is an open ID connect authentication and that we will request an ID token. We also need to provide a client ID that is registered on the ID provider and a state that is provided by the relying party to maintain the state between the request and the callback. And finally, we also need to provide a redirect URI, which is where the user will be redirected after the authorization is done. The user is then redirected to the identity provider where he is asked for his credentials. The identity provider authenticates the user and asks for consent to share their identity with the relying party. With consent given, the IP sends an authorization message to the redirect URI provided earlier. This request includes the code as well as the state provided by the RP earlier. The relying party then makes a request for a token to the token endpoint of the identity provider. By sending the base64 encoded client ID as well as a secret, the authorization code and a redirect URI. The identity provider authenticates the client using the client ID in secret and validates that the authorization code as well as the redirect URI are both valid. If valid, the ID provider responds with an ID token and an access token. The client then finally validates the ID token and if everything is successful, the identity of the user is proven. Because we wanted to have access to the user information, our client will then send a request to the user info endpoint of the identity provider with the access token. Once validated by the identity provider, it will respond back with the requested claims or scope. And the flow is complete and your application now has access to your user profile. And this completes our quick intro on the OpenID Connect protocol. You now know what is the OIDC protocol and how it provides your application with information about who is using your platform. Thank you very much for watching.